Hello, I'm Roy Dunlop. I'm with RM Technical Support and Warranty Department here to speak with you briefly about the electrical inspection of a hoist motor, uh, specifically for the SX series hoist motors. Uh, before we actually go into checking this motor, um, let's make sure that we know that we must isolate the motor leads, the brake leads, as well as the thermal leads from any internal connections going into the crane itself. Uh, we do not want any feedback uh, to skew our values that we will get from the resistance readings of the motor. Once we've isolated the motor uh, and have all leads uh, available for checking, we can start out with any pair, it doesn't matter. In this case, we'll start out with our brake leads, which are blue and brown. In this instance, we have approximately 705 ohms. What we do not want, what you do not want, is for the brake leads to read OL, or an open circuit. After checking your brake leads, you want to move on to your thermal wires. Uh, in this particular case, for this particular motor, the resistance will be close to what you would normally read if you put your meter leads together. It is just two bimetals touching one another, and upon opening, you lose your circuit for your thermals. So they're going to read approximately point, 0 0.0.123, depends upon the accuracy uh, of your meter and the condition of your motor lead, uh, your meter lead, excuse me. From there, we would check the actual motor leads themselves. Now, this is a two-speed motor, so you will have six motor leads uh, coming from the motor. They will normally be labeled 1U1, 1V1, 1W1, and likewise for your second speed except for two. Um, upon checking those, you want to check the low speed between U, V, U, W, and V and W. Also likewise for the second speed. You'll progress on to check the low speed windings to the high speed windings, meaning you'll take one each of your low speed wires and measure them resistance wise to each of the high speed windings, wires. If you have any resistance measurement at all, that motor should be deemed bad we can further uh, review the motor winding check sheet that is both available on our website as well as if you contact uh, the technical support department we can email you a form that you can have with you on site while you check the motor. So if we go to our actual motor leads um, we go from one say of low speed to two of high speed and again you should read OL meaning that that circuit is open. Between your first speed windings or leads the resistance value should be fairly even between the three. Uh, nothing is perfect so you may be off a tenth of an ohm uh, but if you get above a half of an ohm difference between the individual windings on, say, the first speed, uh, chances are you're having an issue with your motor. Then you must investigate why you would uh, have that issue with the motor, which would take further investigation into the crane. Um, one thing that we did not mention briefly with these resistance checks is always check the six total of six leads, first speed and second speed, to ground. You may notice on the form that we have for this that we call it the frame of the motor. It is also considered the ground. If we move into just briefly viewing the motor winding check form, you will see that it's just basic information at the top. You then go through, and as I said, it says motor frame. That is ground. 
So the motor frame is mounted to the hoist, which is all internally, eventually goes to ground, but motor frame. You check it to your low speed windings and whether it will be okay or not. You do the same with your high speed, your thermals, and your brake, as I mentioned. You get down lower and we check low speed to high speed. Again, if you read anything between low and high, the motor is not good. A replacement should be brought in. We get down to the actual measurement values of the low speed and the high speed. Now here we need actual values. 1 ohm, 2 ohms, 3 ohms, so forth. And because we are trying to determine the, 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 the integrity of each speed, that is why we need the values in each column, both high and low. Uh, we also, down at the bottom, ask for the values for the brake. Uh, we also ask you to check your brake disc, the thickness. That, of course, that has nothing to do with electrical uh, checks but because it has to do with the brake and the motor, we just throw that in there so that we would know uh, what the, uh, the thickness of that brake disc is. And then lastly, but not least, down at the bottom as well, we talk about the thermal protection resistance. Please notate that value as well. On this form, as you'll also notice, we have an area down at the bottom where you can place your comments. If there's anything outside of what we have for a description of inspection, you can notate it down here. One thing to mention and to keep before you, when you check your low speed, and I just have the ground wire wrapped around the low speed windings to keep them separate, you will always notice that your low speed windings have a higher resistive measurement than your high speed windings. Your high speed will have a lower ohmic value. In this case, as we check our, two, our second speed of the motor, we can see, meter timed out, we can see that on two legs of our high speed, we have 3.5 ohms between 1 and 3. You have to have your leads down in there or you will get an OL. Check and double check. 3.5. And lastly, 3.4, which eventually turned to 3.5. Again, if you're a tenth or two off, tenth or so off on an ohm, you're okay. When you move above a half ohm, then you potentially have issues with that particular winding. Then we move to our first speed. And again, our first speed will have a higher resistive value than second speed. Here we have 25.2, 25.1.2, it's vacillating. And the same, 25.1.2. So the low speed is even and the high speed is even. And as we go between the two, low to high, and I'll shove this one down in there so it won't move, and now we'll go to one each of our high speed. Open. Second winding, open. Third winding, open. And that does it for one of our low speed windings or wires, the motor leads, will go to the next and we should have the same. OL, OL, OL. And lastly, the third leg of our first speed. To all three of the high, OL, OL, OL. Again, if there is anything, a tenth of an ohm, again, uh, between low and high, that motor should be replaced. Um, you'll find that you'll lose torque if you have resistance going from one 
speed to the next. One more key thing to mention would be to also check your brake leads as well as your thermal leads for the motor to ground. Uh, because you're at the point to where uh, you're investigating the motor, uh, you want to get as much information as you can while you're at the motor leads. So everything to ground, brake by themselves, thermals by themselves, first speed by itself, second, and then first to second speed. Once you do that, you will have accomplished uh, all of the resistive checks that we perform on the motors. Uh, lastly, one more item. Please, and it should be at the top of the list, please do not magger r and hoist motors. It can damage the insulation of the motor, not allowing our inspectors to do their proper work to the motor to determine the issue at hand. For more information on motor winding check sheets or other items that you may find of interest or need, go to our website, which is www.rmhoist.com. Thank you.